Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial and today we're going to be creating a cube as well as applying lighting to our rendering system. So uh, stay tuned! In order for us to use lighting in our 3D world, we'll need to understand the concept of normal vectors. So each vertex of our 3D models will have a corresponding normal vector. This vector will be perpendicular to the surface. We're then going to create a light which will have a position in 3D space. We can then create a vector between the light and the currently processed vertex. And by comparing the angle between the normal vector and the light vector, we can adjust the brightness of the surface. So starting off, we're going to replace our triangle with a cube. So inside the init folder, we can create a new file called cube.js. And inside of here, uh, we're going to copy and paste some data that I'll include in the description. So we're going to have the vertices and the indices of a cube instead now. And then we want to export default and then object and just pass in the vertices and the indices. Then we can save that, go in here, and we can import it. So import cube from cube. And then we can go ahead and say that the vertices is equal to the cube.vertices. And the same for the indices. And if you take a look at these coordinates here, they are all set to 1. And our triangle was set to 0 0.5. So we'll actually need to decrease the scaling to 0.5 to get it to look nice. And if we open up our browser, we can now see that we have a cube instead. Now we'll also need to add the normals, the normal vectors to this file. And I also have these copied down because it's a lot of data. So in order to not make any mistakes, we're just going to copy and paste them from the description and then just include these into this object. So these are the normal vectors for all different faces of the cube. Then we're going to go into our model type and we're going to create a new buffer to keep these normal vectors. So gen normal buffer. And we can just copy and paste whatever we had from the vertex buffer and we're going to rename this to normal buffer and use this here as well. And then we also need to pass in the normals and say that this dot normals is equal to normals. And then we can use this here as well. Now we can go down to the use function and we're going to add some function functionality here as well. And we're going to call glc.bindArrayBuffer after we've enabled the position, but this time with the normal buffer. And we also want another function inside the shader called enableNormals. Then we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this light source. So light source. And we can just create a new file called edX.js in here. So first of all, we're going to import the VEC3 from GLmatrix. Then we want to export a default class called light. And we need a constructor. And we're going to give this, first of all, a position. So X, Y, and Z. We also want an RGB value for the color of the light and also an ambient factor here. So how bright should the dark spots be, basically? So this.x is equal to x, and do that for every single one of these. So Good. Now we want three functions here to return whatever we want. So get position is actually going to return the VEC3 from values, which we used in the transformation matrix. And that will take in the X, the Y, and the Z. Then we want a function to get the color, VEC3 dot from values again. 
this dot r this dot g and this dot b and then we'll also have another one to get the ambient uh, factor so ambient this dot ambient then we want to go into our model shader and we're going to add a couple of uh, attributes no not a couple of attributes one attribute and a couple of uniforms so the first attribute is going to be the normals so this dot normal attribute is equal to glc dot and we're going to do the same thing here so get attribute location and we're going to create a new location which is going to be called normal like that and then we can refer to in here then we want to create uh, uniforms for all of our different settings for the light. So this dot light position is equal to glc dot get uniform location. And we can do this for each and one of those. And the light position is just going to be called light light position. And we can copy and paste this. And we want the light color. And we also want the ambient factor. Then we want to create a function to enable the normals. So enable normals. And this will call glc dot. Actually, we can just copy and paste this as well because it's the same functionality, more or less. And then we can take the normal attribute and just use it like that. Then we'll also need a function to enable the lighting uniforms. So enable light. And this will actually take in the light class we just created. So glc dot and then we're going to create a couple of functions inside the GLC. So one is going to be called upload vec3. And let's just put an F so we know that these are floats. So this dot light position. And we're going to call light dot get position. Then we want to upload the light color. And that is going to be the same function in GLC. So this dot light color and light up get color and the final thing we need is glc dot upload float so we're going to create that as well and this will take in the ambient light and the light dot get ambient so the lights ambient value now we need to change some code in our vertex shader so the first thing we can actually do is to delete the color uh, thing which created here like that and then we need to take in a new attribute and this attribute is the normal attribute back three and we're going to do this and type normal then we want to create a couple of uniforms so uniform vec3 light position, which we just passed in from the shader. The light color and also a uniform float light ambient. Now we need to do some lighting calculations here to determine uh, how much the lighting should affect the surface. So first of all, instead of doing this, we need to break out this to a variable. So vec4 world position will equal this. And then we can take the world position and just set that to the GL position. Then we want to actually uh, change the normals as well with this transformation matrix. So we can do that by first of all typing surface normal is equal to and we're going to take the transformation matrix and we're going to multiply that by vec4 and inside of here we're going to throw in the normal for this vertex and then we also need the 0, 0.0 and then 
dot x, y, and z because we only care about those components. And this surface normal here is actually going to be a varying variable here. So varying vec3 surface normal. So we're going to pass this into the fragment shader. We'll also need the light vector, so varying vec3 light vector. And we're going to create this down here. So the light vector is equal to the light position minus the world position dot x, y, z. And then we want to create two more varying variables. Uh, one is going to be called pass light color. So we're going to pass the light color to the fragment shader. And we're also going to pass the ambient light. So pass ambient, well, light ambient. And then down here, we just want to say that the pass light color is equal to the incoming light color. And for the light ambient, we'll do the same thing here. Then we want to go into our fragment shader and we can just take all of these, so copy them, go into the fragment shader, and we just want to remove the color here as well. And we can just pass them in here. And then we can just remove this for now. And then we want to create a new VEC3. And we're going to name this unit normal. So we're going to normalize the surface normal. And if you don't know what normalize is, it's basically taking a vector and make sure it's one unit long. And then we want to do the same thing for the unit light vector. So we're going to normalize the light vector. And we just want to make sure that we've typed everything correctly here. Then we're going to create the dot value between these vectors. So this will equal a dot function of the unit normal and the unit light vector. So how much should the light affect this surface? Then we're going to create a new float, call this brightness, and this is going to use the GLSL's max function. And we're going to pass in the end dot value, which we just got, and we're going to take the pass light ambient and throw that in here. And then we're going to create a new VEC3, call this diffuse, and this will be the brightness multiplied by a, another VEC3, and this will be the light color. And then finally, we can output the fragment color, so GL frag color is equal to VEC4, and we're going to throw in some some kind of a color value for our model and I'm just going to choose a dark color and then 1.0 and then we want to multiply this by another VEC4 which is going to take in the diffuse and that is basically our fragment shader code. Now we need to go into our model renderer and the render function will actually take in the light we just created and we want to call this dot shader dot enable light with this light and now we need to create those functions we just created inside the GLC so if you go down here we now want to be able to upload a VEC3 so upload VEC3F I'm just going to be checking this so it's absolutely spelled correctly otherwise it will be boring And we can just throw in the location and a vector. So a vector. And we're going to call this.gl.uniform three float. And it's going to be a vector. And throw in the location and also the vec3. And then we also want to, to be able to upload a float. So the location as always and the value of the float and I call this .gl uniform one f and the location and the value. So now we can go into our init file again. And now we want to create a new const, so normals, 
is equal to cube.normals. And then we can just throw these in into our model type. Then we want to import the light. So import light from the light source. So we're going to create a new light here. So const light is equal to a new light. And this will take in the, first of all, the positions. So we're going to set the, uh, the x value to, let's say, 100, the y to 100, and then just minus 100 in the z axis. And then we'll set the color to just be a white light. And the ambient color can be like 1.0.4. And then we can throw in the lights inside of our render function. And maybe we can also rename this to cube now. And one thing that we have actually forgot is to use the normal buffer inside of our model type. So we need to call this inside of the constructor here. So this dot gen normal buffer. So now if we open up a browser, you can see that we have a fully lighted cube in 3D space. So that is pretty awesome. So next time we'll take a look at how we can texture this cube. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.